Hello everyone. Doing a teaching today on empathy and compassion. Some time ago, a person said to me, you know, you're just not empathetic enough. You don't, you don't seem to show empathy. That's really a big accusation to make towards someone. And at first, I just started questioning myself, like, what's the matter with me? Just based off of what this person was saying. I took it to heart and I started thinking, well, gee, maybe they're right. Maybe I don't really know how to show empathy or maybe I'm just not empathetic enough. But the truth of the matter is, you can't be, you cannot be a spirit-filled person. You can't have the mind of Christ and not know how to show empathy. But you can be a spirit-filled person and have the mind of Christ and not show empathy the way the world does. So that's what I'm gonna be teaching about today, that there's a difference between the way the world shows empathy and the way Christians show it. Let's talk. Okay, so if you go to chapter five of St. John, we see the story of the man who was at the pool uh, it says in chapter 5, verse 2, I'm looking over my Bible here. It says, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So if you know the story of the man who was at the, the pool of Bethesda, he wasn't able to get into the water when the angels or the angel would come and he would trouble the water. The people who were lame or sick or whatever the case, impotent, they would get into the water and they would be healed. But this man said that Whenever the waters were troubled by the angels, he was never able to get in. And the reason why he said he wasn't able to get in was because no one helped him to get in. So when Jesus saw the man, he didn't run up to the man and grab him and hug him and say, Oh, you poor thing. I see you here and I see that you are unable um, to get into this water. Because, of course, Jesus knew that they, I mean, what did Jesus not know? Jesus knew the situation. He knew the man had been in the situation as far as not being able to walk for 38 years. Jesus knew about that. Um, and um, that's in chapter, chapter 4, verse 5, where it says, and a certain man was there and had infirmity 38 years. So Jesus knew the man because Jesus knew everything. He knew the man had been in the situation for 38 years. So for 38 years, the man had been by the pool of Bethesda. The angel had been coming. I don't know how many times a year. I don't know. You know. It may say right here, but right now at the top of my head, I don't remember if it was more than once a year. I just knew the angel would come and that the waters would be troubled. And if you had an infirmity, if you got in the water, it would be healed. This man said no one would help him. And so that's why. For 38 years, he was impotent, okay? So Jesus, like I said, did not come up to this man and grab him and hug him and say, Oh my goodness, I feel so bad for you because you've just been here for 38 years and you haven't been able to get into the water and you're just suffering. <sighs> That's worldly empathy. Worldly empathy is loosely based upon pitying people. There might be some tears. There might be some drugstore psychology. <laughs> um, there might be some hugs. But what's, the, what's missing? There probably won't be any healing. There probably won't be any help. There'll be a lot of pity. There'll be a lot of tears. Probably be a few words. But that person will be no better off 
if you utilize worldly empathy. Jesus did not use natural or worldly empathy when he dealt with people. But in this particular story from St. John chapter 4, he used divine empathy and compassion. And because of it, this man was healed. If you look at the, the text, Jesus asked the man a very important question in chapter 6. He said to him, will you be made whole? In other words, man, you've been here for 38 years. You keep, you, you're telling me, you know, that the waters, you know, the angel is coming and the angel is troubling the waters, but there ain't nobody here to help you get into the water. Let's think about that for a minute. If, if let's just change the scenario here and let's just say that this is a situation that involves, I don't know, money. <laughs> and you say, you know, this angel shows up every month or once a year around December. The days, I made this on the 13th of December, so... Let's just say the angel shows up on every year in December the 13th and they bring a briefcase of money. But dang, the angel is on the other side of town. I don't have no way to get there. So that's why I'm broke every time they come and I'm broke when they leave. What's wrong with that picture? If you know the angel is showing up on December the 13th, you're going to tell me that you're not going to make sure that you find a way to get to wherever this angel shows up to every time. You're going to be the first one in line. Because that's how much you want what that angel is bringing. So that's what Jesus was saying to this man. If you know that the angel is coming to trouble the waters, then you're going to be doing everything in your power to get into that pool. I don't care if you got to tell somebody, get me in there, get me in there right now. I don't care if you got to, you will do, you're going to do something to get in this, in this thing. So that's why Jesus is asking the man, do you want to be made whole? Jesus is not grabbing this man and hugging him and crying with him. Jesus is using divine empathy mixed with compassion to see this man get set free. So I, I, I just want to say this right now. Don't ever let anybody tell you that because the way you do something, because, because of the way you do something, because it doesn't register with, some, with other people, don't, don't let that cause you to change the way you do it. As long as God is okay with the way you're doing it, keep doing it that way. Because there, there might have been some people who saw Jesus with this man. And they may have thought, my goodness, the man has been here for 38 years. Show a little empathy. Without realizing who Jesus was. That Jesus was showing the man empathy. Because he was trying to shake the man up. To get him to think. To get him to realize. Listen. If you really want to be healed, do something. Don't just sit here and say... You don't have nobody to help you. In fact, I'm standing right here in front of you. And I'm not going to leave until you are helped. Because I don't know if this man knew all that at the time, obviously. But he found out after he left. You read down further into this uh, story, into this text, which is um, towards, uh, I believe it's 14... No, I'm sorry, 11. By the time you get down to 11, he's telling him, you know, um, take up your bed and walk. So this man was healed after it was all said and done. After he met with Jesus, he was healed. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but Jesus wasn't there before. But the point is, is what Jesus was saying to the man is that if you really want to be healed and you see the way to do it, don't make up excuses. That's what Jesus was saying to this man. 
But the reason why I chose this particular story was because I wanted to make a point that when you truly have divine empathy for people, you may not always be shedding divine empathy is not the same as the empathy that we see in the natural world where you just pity people. You just feel sorry for people without trying to bring some sort of resolve, some sort of solution to whatever is going on with them. Another great example of that would be deliverance ministry. When people are called to deliverance ministry, you have to have divine empathy and you have to have compassion in order to move and to be used in deliverance ministry. You have to know what's going on with someone and you have to desire to see that person be set free. A person could see somebody with, with, with natural or worldly empathy or compassion and they could know something's not right with that person, but they may not be able to do anything because that's what happens when you have worldly empathy and worldly compassion. You just pity the person. But when you have divine empathy, when you have divine compassion, you don't want to leave the person the way you found them. Just like Jesus didn't leave the man at the pool of Bethesda the way he found him. When Jesus left that man, he was whole. He didn't have to be sitting around a pool no more saying, I wonder if I'm going to be able to get in there this time. No, he was whole. He was whole. Somebody said to me that I didn't, I was not empathetic because I, I didn't exemplify their idea of what empathy was because they were looking at it through the natural lens. They were looking at empathy through worldly eyes but I'm not worldly. I exhibit divine empathy. I exhibit divine compassion. I don't want to just feel sorry for people because I see them hurting. That doesn't mean I can't shed a tear for someone if I see them going through. But it means that I, I desire to do more than cry with you. If I see something's wrong, I want to see Jesus set you free. Yeah, I want to see Jesus set you free. Because true believers, we don't just hear about problems. We're supposed to be problem solvers. And we ought to be really ticked off if we meet someone and we have to leave them the way we found them. Because that is not what Jesus did. And we are supposed to have the mind of Christ. Our lives are supposed to exemplify Christ. There's the world way of doing things. There's the kingdom way of doing things. The kingdom way of doing things is divine. All too often, we like to try to pair up the kingdom, which is way up here, <laughs> with the world, which is way down here, way, 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 way down here somewhere. <laughs> and you can't do that. The kingdom's way of doing things is not the way the world does it. The kingdom's definition of love is not even the same as the world definition of love. The kingdom definition of love is unconditional. Now, can we say that about the world? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, Never mistake the way the world does something with the way the kingdom does something. And back on the subject of empathy, divine empathy and compassion versus world empathy and world worldly compassion. There just is there is no comparison. You can have Empathy in the world, you can have empathy and not have compassion. In the kingdom, 
You cannot have empathy and not have compassion. You say, well, why is that? Because in the world, I can pity you and feel sorry for you and cry with you and woe is me with you all day. But in the kingdom, if I'm truly empathetic towards you, then I want to see your problem solved. Which means, instead of sitting and crying with you, I'm trying to get an understanding of what God, is, what God wants to do for you. So I don't have time to sit there and boo-hoo cry. I don't have time to sit there and be trying to hug you and do all this and, and, and kumbaya. No, I have to get an understanding of what God is saying about your situation because I want to see him set you free. If something is going on with me, I don't know about you, but if something is going on with me, do not send me a carnal Christian who just wants to sit and cry with me because I don't because I'm sick or because something has happened in my life. Oh no. I can cry by myself. Send somebody who's got the mind of Christ who says, "You know what? Weeping has endured for a night. It's morning. It's time for you to have some joy. This is what the Lord is showing me about your situation. This is what we're going to do." And the Lord says, you're coming out this thing better than you. Listen, send me the person who's got divine empathy and compassion, who's got the mind of Christ, who thinks like a kingdom person. Don't send me that worldly stuff. Don't send no carnal Christians to me. Talking about, oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh, I don't know how this happened to you. Oh, and it, no. No. Mm-mm. Send me the problem solvers. Send me the person that thinks like Christ. If you love me, you don't want to see me stay in that situation. You want to see me come out. I don't know how anybody would hear me saying this and not understand where I'm coming from. Don't have worldly empathy. Over here just all by itself. Have divine empathy. It's way up here somewhere, folks. Have divine empathy. Coupled with compassion. Because that way, you're going to get some stuff done. You're going to see some problems solved. You're going to see God get the glory. You cannot have kingdom empathy which is divine empathy apart from compassion they work together sort of like how chapter 8 of Proverbs says you can't have wisdom without prudence makes sense doesn't it empathy just means I can see where you are and I feel for you I literally feel for you. I'm trying to get into wherever you're at. I'm getting into that place. I see it's not good. And I don't like it for you. And I want you to come out. That's, that's divine empathy. Worldly empathy says, I feel sorry for you. Like I said, it's just, it's just feeling sorry for someone. That's it. There's no answer. I just feel sorry for you. <laughs> I see you crying. I want to hug you. No. Don't give me a Band-Aid if I'm bleeding to death. <laughs> Don't give me a band-aid. I'm bleeding to death and you're giving me a band-aid? I can cry. I do bad all by myself. Send me the person who sees me in the rough place and is able to hear God and see me through. That's the difference between worldly empathy, which doesn't account for very much, and divine empathy that's always coupled with compassion. Whereas worldly empathy is generally all by itself. 
because kingdom empathy, which is divine, mixed with compassion, gets things done. Compassion means I'm not going to let you stay where you are. I want to see you come out. But if I'm over here and I just have this carnality, this, this worldly empathy, I'm not going to, I don't want to see you come out. I just want to cry with you because I feel sorry for you. Now, if that's the best you can do, that's the best you can do. But in the kingdom, in the, in, in the believer's walk, that's just not good enough. You ought to be in a place if you're not there, you should want to be in a place where you say, you know what, when I see somebody and I see them in a bad place, I don't want to just be able to come hug them. I want to leave them better off than they were when I found them. That's kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus did not leave the man at the pool of Bethesda like he found him. And as a believer, you should want to be the same way. That's a difference, people, between worldly and kingdom. They are not the same. Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share this teaching. And I pray that everyone who hears it will be blessed by it. And that they will want to grow in understanding and in wisdom towards you as it relates to divine empathy and compassion. And that you will bless them in their spirits, bless them in their gifting so that when they meet people, they won't leave them the same. Because you will be glorified in them, through them, and all around them. Receive that now in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Thank you for watching.